Do you crack your knuckles? Why do you crack your knuckles? Has anyone ever told you not to do it because it can cause arthritis? Well, is this a myth or is it true? Hello, my name is Carlo Ojer. I am an emergency physician and I am here to answer one simple question. Does cracking your knuckles actually cause arthritis? The short answer is, cracking your knuckles may annoy the people around you, but it will not increase your chances of getting arthritis. Now you're welcome to stop watching this video. And the next time you're told this myth, you can tell them they're wrong because Dr. ER TV told you so. But they're definitely gonna look at you weird and challenge your fact. So you better watch the rest of the video so you can challenge back their arguments and even throw in some other factoids related to the popping of joints you will learn in this video. First, let's learn some facts about knuckle cracking. A quarter to even half of people crack their knuckles, and most knuckle crackers are male. Cracking knuckles does not appear to cause or worsen arthritis, but it can soften your grip and strength and lead to soft tissue swelling. Cracking joints and popping of knuckles are an interesting and poorly understood phenomenon. There are many theories as to why joints crack or pop, but the exact cause is simply not known. There are a few theories, however. First is a process called, you ready for it, tribonucleation. Second is called cavitation within the joint, when small cavities of partial vacuum form in the synovial fluid and then rapidly collapse, producing a sharp sound or pop and the rapid stretching of ligaments, the third theory, the intraarticular or within the joint adhesion being broken when you move your joints. There are three main gases that are dissolved in the fluids throughout your body, more specifically in the synovial fluid. The synovial fluid is a egg-like consistency that helps lubricate the joints. These three gases are oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide. When you crack your knuckles by stretching or bending them backwards, like so, you are in fact creating a negative pressure within the joint. Some of these gases that are dissolved in the synovial fluid leave the solution making a bubble. By collecting real-time footage using an MRI, magnetic resonant imaging, one study concluded that joint cracking is related to the cavity formation, that's when the bubble forms within the space rather than the collapse of the gas bubbles. So you pull and it forms a negative suction, bubbles appear creating the noise, and the second theory is bubbles break, creating a second pop. The scientists studied 10 MCP joints by inserting volunteers' fingers into a flexible tube that could be used to apply traction to the joint. They took images using MRI before and after traction was applied to the joint, to the point where it cracked. The results show that rapid creation of a cavity inside the joint at the point of joint separation, and this was what produced the sound. The cavity remained visible after the noise occurred. This suggests that the cracking of the joint itself may be sufficient to cause rapid cavitation and the popping sound you hear. In other words, the cracking or popping sound is thought to be caused by the gases rapidly coming out of solution and forming within the cavity, allowing the capsule to stretch just a little bit further. The stretching of the joint is soon thereafter limited by the length of the capsule. If you take an x-ray of the joint after cracking, you can see gas bubbles inside the joint. This gas increases the joint volume by 15 to 20 percent, and it consists mostly, about 80 percent of it is carbon dioxide. The effects of this process will remain for a period of time, also known as the refractory period, during which the joint cannot be recracked and usually takes about 20 minutes. While these gases are slowly reabsorbed into the synovial fluid, research has shown that bubbles remain in the fluid after cracking, suggesting that the cracking zone is produced when the bubble within the joint was formed and not when the bubble collapsed and the bubbles enter back into the solution. Some people think there's a double pop when it forms and when it goes back into the solution. As a rule, 
painless cracking of joints is not harmful. However, common sense would generally suggest that the intentional and repetitive cracking of one's joints not only is potentially bothersome socially, but could also be physically troublesome if it produces pain. Knuckle cracking has not been shown to be harmful, but it has not been shown to be beneficial either. More specifically, knuckle cracking does not cause arthritis. There's a doctor called Donald Unger. He learned from his mom that knuckle cracking would cause arthritis. So what did he do? He researched his own knuckle cracking in response to the many complaints from his family, more specifically his mother, who told him many times that he would get arthritis if he kept doing it. So he did what any sane person would do. He cracked the knuckles of his left hand at least twice a day, but not the knuckles of his right hand. And he did this for 50 years. So two times 365 times 50, 35,000 pops later, he did x-rays on both his hands and, and Dr. Unger did not develop arthritis on either hand. In fact, there were no difference between the two hands at all. He concluded that knuckle cracking was not linked to arthritis. That's pretty cool stuff, but not really a scientific study. There was just one person. So, a clinical study published in 2011 examined the hands or by radiographs or taking action of 215 people between the ages of 50 and 89 and compared the joints of those who regularly said they cracked their knuckles and those who did not. The study concluded that knuckle cracking did not cause hand osteoarthritis no matter how many years or how often that person cracked their knuckles. Pain, swelling, or limited range of motions are signs that the joint has damage, possibly from arthritis, trauma, gout, etc. So if you experience these symptoms when you pop your joints, then that could be due because you have a pre-existing condition that is being aggravated by the twisting and pressing of the joint itself. So the question is, why do people crack their joints? Why do you crack your joints? Well, it appears that joint manipulation stimulates a set of nerve endings involved in the sense of motion of that joint called the Golgi tendon organs. The joint manipulation relaxes the muscles surrounding the joint. So, popping the joints may make them feel more mobile, more relaxed, and with less tension. But gas formation, the theory we explained before of popping your joint, is not the only reason why joints make a popping or cracking noises. Another reason for joints to make pops or cracks when they're stretched is actually the result of what happens to the tendons and ligaments near the joint. Tendons must cross at least one joint in order to cause motion. But when a joint moves, the tendon's position with respect to the joint is forced to change. It's not uncommon for the tendon to shift in a slightly different position followed by a sudden snap or noise as the tendon returns to its original location with respect to the joint. These noises are often heard in the knee and ankle joints, or when standing up from seated position after a long time, or when walking up and down the stairs. So you'll notice that some people may crack their joints repetitively. Well, that cracking is probably caused by motion of the bones themselves and ligaments and tendons, and not by creating these gas bubbles. Because as explained earlier, there is a refractory period in which the joint cannot be popped again and again. Again, my name is Dr. Carlo Ojeda. I hope you learned a lot with this video. I certainly learned a lot making the video. If you have any questions or concerns, please email me at carlooller at gmail.com. For other videos like this one, don't forget to go and subscribe to dr.er.tv. We'll see you in our next video. Bye-bye.